Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slanted Lens, we're back at the YouTube space shooting with their high-speed camera, the Phantom. We're going to take a look at the basics of slow motion video, and then how to use the Phantom camera, which is anything but the basics of slow motion video. We have the 22222 giveaway. Check it out at the end of the video. Let's look at the basics of slow motion video. It's easier to understand when we relate it to frame rates. On a normal clip of video, we shoot 24 frames a second. In one second, we stream together 24 individual frames that create motion. Our editing timeline is set for 24 frames to show each second. When we watch our video, we see 24 frames for one second of time. That's called real time. The person walking through the frame is walking at normal speed from point A to point B. When we change the rate at which we capture frames to 60 frames a second, then we have captured in one second 60 individual frames. Now when we put them on the 24 frames per second timeline, it takes 2.4 seconds to show the 60 frames. The distance they traveled in one second is the same, but on our 24 frame timeline, 60 frames will play back at 2.4 seconds. It slows the person down so it takes 2.4 times longer to walk from point A to point B. They walk very slow. If we just slow down a normal clip that shot at 24 frames a second to 2.4 seconds, the frames are going to be jittery and jumpy and it just looks really odd. There's not enough frames to fill, so it jumps from frame to frame. So we need to shoot more frames to show slow motion. On the Mark III, you can only shoot 24 frames at 1080p. You have to drop to 720p for 60 frames. On the Sony A7S, you can shoot 60 frames at 1080p and 120 frames at 720p. If you really want to see the detail that comes when you smash a camera, for instance, not that there's any reason we would be doing that, but you're going to need to go to 1,000 or 1,500 frames a second, thus the Phantom camera. It will shoot up to 1,540 frames at 1080p and 8,490 frames at 640p. For our demonstration, we're going to shoot at 1,000 and 1,500 frames per second at 1080p. Let's take a look at our camera settings. They're a bit tricky with the Phantom, and then how we lit our camera smash. Because we're shooting 1,000 frames a second, we're going to need to shoot at 2,000th of a second for our shutter speed. That takes a whole lot of light. Remember, twice the frame rate for our shutter speed. On the Phantom, there are not different shutter speeds, but just shutter angles. At 180 degrees, we know that the shutter will give us the equivalent of twice the frame rate. If we shoot at a 90 degree shutter, it's going to cause a motion blur to be much less than what we're used to looking at. It's going to feel a little choppy. So we need to shoot at 180 degrees, which will give us the equivalent of roughly twice the shutter speed. Remember, we're going to need twice the frame rate, and that's what we get at 180 degree shutter. Our aperture is going to be 4.0. Let's take a look at our lighting. Remember, we're going to need a lot of light because we're shooting at roughly 2,000th of a second. And in some cases, 3,000th of a second. The first image shows the light that's in the room. There's not much here at all. We added a 2K from camera right to give us some backlight and a rim on our product. We then added a 2K from camera left to rim the other side of our product and to give us more backlight. Then from camera left, we added a 1K aimed straight at the product. We then added a layer of diffusion to smooth out the highlight. Last of all, we added two Photoflux light panels up front. They'll bounce light back into the product and also block the 2Ks from flaring into the lens of the camera. The problem with this camera is it only gives you about 4 seconds of record time at 1,000 frames a second. At 15,000 frames, it only gives you 2.5 seconds of record time. This limitation would cause this camera to be hard to use as a production camera to shoot a lot of things. You know, there was a trigger method I didn't really understand at first, but now it makes better sense. The camera is always running. It's always recording. And you can use a trigger where the trigger, when the explosion happens, you hit trigger, and it gives you two seconds before and two seconds after the explosion or the moment you hit the trigger. That's actually a pretty good way to make sure you don't miss the explosion. We did run the camera from the laptop. It's impossible to run on the camera. The laptop's very intuitive. You can see the settings. You can set things from there. You can make the changes. It's just much easier to run from there. The lag time from camera to laptop, however, was hard. Like if you're trying to focus, you got to do that on the screen on the side of the camera, which made more sense. So now I think it's time for us to take a look at some smashing cameras.
those cameras roll and keep on clicking. Keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. And here it is, the 22222 giveaway. Two flex flash heads, 200 watt seconds, two light boxes, two stands, and we're giving away two of them. Go to thestlinelens.com. Action. Oh, dang it.